explain different possibilities for raid arrays. There's there's a whole list of different uh, types of raid. There's standard and there's nested raid. I'll go over uh, standard raid first. Um, standard raid. There's basically four types of raid that are pretty common that are standard raid. First type, um, raid zero, which stands for striping. Basically, raid zero is higher read write performance, uh, more storage space, but there's no data security. So, as I mentioned before, RAID is basically using two or more hard drives to act as one. Uh, so, with RAID 0, data is broken up into chunks and divided between two or more disks. So, let's say you have a file, uh, a one megabyte file, and the stripe size is 500 kilobytes, let's just say for argument's sake. Um, when you go to save that file, half of that file is saved to one hard drive and half that file is saved to the other hard drive. So you have half of it on each hard drive. What this means is, first of all, you're going through two interfaces. So your write speed is theoretically twice as fast. It's never actually quite twice as fast, but it's theoretically a lot faster because you can write to two hard drives simultaneously your data. So you get a lot faster response like that, and that's true with reading data as well because you can read from two locations. Um, the thing with this, though, the, the other thing is um, with RAID 0 is you're getting all the possible storage space. And also, as I mentioned, the OS sees it as one drive. So let's say you have two 500 gigabyte drives. When you're running hardware RAID 0 or software RAID 0, uh, the operating system basically see a, sees it as one large one terabyte drive. And when you save things to there, the RAID controller or the software program doing the RAID uh, handles everything else and distributes the data to the two hard drives. Uh, the only thing with RAID 0, though, is if one hard drive fails, even if it's only one hard drive, you lose everything. You don't just lose half the data. You lose everything. Um, that's because, as I mentioned before with our one megabyte file, the data is split up between the, the... Each file is split up between the two. It's not like you have half the files on one and half the files on the other, like you would if you were just using two independent 500 gigabyte drives. So um, there's basically no security with RAID 0, but a lot of gamers prefer it. Uh, because it does increase throughput, especially if you're already using high-performance drives like Western Digital Raptor drives, for example. Um, RAID 1 is, another, is the other most common type. And RAID 1 is basically just mirroring. Um, there's no performance boost from this, but you have full data backup, and um, your storage is basically half of what the addition of the two hard drives is. So let's say you have, once again, two 500 gigabyte hard drives. When you save data to one hard drive, it automatically writes the exact same data to the other hard drive. So one, one hard drive is always a mirror image of the other hard drive. Um, this can occasionally increase read speeds very slightly because it can read data from both locations. But in general, there's not really much of a performance hit or boost with RAID 1. Um, in some cases, there can actually be a small performance hit uh, when you're writing because you have to write two locations. But with RAID 1, you have full data backup. So if one drive fails, you still have the other one, which is an exact copy of data. Your system can continue to run with one hard drive, in fact. And if you then put in another hard drive, the RAID array will automatically rebuild using the uh, existing hard drive, and it'll copy the data back over. Um, and same thing as before, the OS only sees one disk. So if you have 500 gigabyte drives, the OS will see one 500 gigabyte drive, even though you tech but have a total of one terabyte of storage, uh, half of that is an exact back backup the other half. So you don't even see that. It just does it in the background. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a complete security with that. So that's RAID 0 and RAID 1. Then we get slightly more complicated uh, using parity bits. So RAID 5 is also a fairly common standard RAID configuration. Uh, RAID 5 is a hard drive striped with parity. So, like I mentioned in RAID 0, striped is when you take a file and divide it up across several hard drives. Um, the difference is RAID 5 has a minimum of three hard drives, and one-third of your total space, not necessarily on just one drive, but split out amongst them, one-third of your total space is used as parity data, which is basically data that can be used to rebuild the data file if one of the hard, drive, one of the hard drives were to fail. Um, so, let's say you have... Once again, you have three 500 gigabyte disks. Um, basically what happens is when you save a file, it will store 
half of that file to hard drive A, half of it to hard drive B, and then on hard drive C, you will have parity information about that hard disk, uh, sorry, about that data file. Um, so if uh, hard drive A or B fails, you have the data necessary to rebuild one of those hard drives from that information. And if drive C fails, you have, uh, it doesn't matter because that's only the parity information, you still have the original data files in the first two. So if any of the drives fail, you, um, you can rebuild the data. And then for each piece of data that you write, where the parity bit is, or where the parity information is, gets shifted. So the next bit we write, uh, the data will be stored on, let's say, hard drives A and C, and the parity bit will be on drive B. So it's distributed parity, as, as the name describes. Um, so if one drive fails, uh, the system will continue to operate, uh, although at, dec at decreased efficiency. Um, and then if you insert another drive, just like with RAID 1, the system will automatically rebuild it using either the parity data or the full data, depending on what's available for that particular piece of information. So that's RAID 5. And then RAID 6 is the last common form of standard RAID, although there are other forms. Um, RAID 6 is just like RAID 5, but it's striped with dual parity. So this is a minimum of four disks, and it can protect your data if up to two disks fail. Um, so you have four disks now, and for every piece of data you write, parity data gets stored on the other two disks. So um, it can survive two simultaneous failures um, with all the information still being intact. So if you have, let's say, four or 500 gigabyte drives, the operating system only sees one terabyte of storage, uh, and the other half is being used for parity data uh, that can be used to rebuild if necessary. And there are a few other types of, uh, of standard RAID. Uh, RAID 2, which is no longer used, it was similar to RAID 0, but um, it had error correction built in and it used smaller stripes. RAID 3, um, which couldn't provide, uh, which, well, it still exists, it can't provide simultaneous reads to uh, multiple disks in an array, so like I mentioned with RAID 0, uh, you can look, you can read, from, read and write from both the disks simultaneously to get some increased speed. Um, RAID 3 uh, cannot do that, although RAID 3 has a parity disk like RAID 5. RAID 5 has parity. The difference though is RAID 3 has one disk that's just parity. So as with RAID 5, it was distributed across the same, th same thing with RAID 6. With RAID 3, one of the three disks is used as parity information about the other two disks. Uh, and then there's RAID 4, which is uh, also similar to RAID 5 uh, in that it has a dedicated parity disk, although it can perform sim simultaneous reads. Uh, so RAID 2, 3, and 4 are not commonly used, but they do exist. Uh, RAID 2 is basically gone now. It doesn't exist anymore. And then there are several other pri uh, proprietary RAID configurations that um, aren't really in standard usage.